Hey, hey uh, weather is, it's been a while, but the weather's got gotten, we had a little rain yesterday, which stopped us from combining, and they got done a little early at the job today, so it's a good day to work on the 400, and we to put a little time in on it today. I have to deal with these manifold studs. And the five out of the six of them came out with a nut, and that's no good. You take a little weasel piss, spray on the nut, the threads. Well, tighter, I guess. That should be good enough, I'll get it in that. Lock these nuts good and tight together, and then I'm gonna take clamp just the bottom one and the vise. Not sure if that's even possible. A little more WD and put on it. That didn't help me. at all I'm winning, even if it moves the wrong direction. It's coming loose. I'll try grabbing it on the top only, and, or on the butt, top nut only, and then try and back the nut right off. To save old studs sometimes can be a tedious job. It's a really tedious job. All I'll do is you'd be better off just holding the bottom nut with you. There we go.
Well, I got four of the six studs in. These two I have to screw in as a bolt because they're eating enough that I think I'll damage them if I try and take them apart. But with four of them, they'll hold the two in each gasket. It should hold it from should hold the gasket in place until they get the manifold started. Here's some new gaskets I had to. I got them at Steiner. They're fairly inex, inexpensive. If I get them at uh, the Case IH dealer, I bet you I'd be paying four or five times that much. So we'll use these and get the manifold on, I guess. These aren't starting worth a darn. Imagine the trouble I would have if I uh, didn't have four done. Well, I think this one started. I think this one will start it. I need to get more hard washers. Just run these in a bit. and tightening. I'll try this one. Yeah, that was, that's full yet, but this one's not. I gotta do something about this stud that's not going in all the way. So I gotta get a different one if all else fails. Well now I'll work on pulling the 400 carburetor apart and giving it its bath. I'm not expecting much good in this carburetor. After seeing what the gas tank was made out of. Oh this is loose. No screen in it. Oh, there is a screen. It's not in it. Screen is clean, but solder came undone. Well, it'll still work like that, actually. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. When I look at the gas tank, I expected the, it to be like a policy announcement from Justin Trudeau. Not 100% sure what you're getting, but you're no good and well, you're not going to like it. That's the way I feel about this carburetor right now. I'm not, not so convinced I'm going to like what I see inside. So that's why I'm cleaning it up. Then she's going to go for a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner and might as well clean it up right away, you know good and well you're gonna need to. Gives it, it when you do this kind of work right away it takes away some of the excuses why the tractor won't run when you try it. I have gaskets for these things here so <laughs> Well, oh, float's damaged. I should probably. I'll change the float. That's a problem, trouble spot. But yeah, it's full of water. And clean the crud out of it. Pin went out. Oh, there's the needle. Oh, this is a good needle valve. No, it's a, it's a steel on steel. It's not the rubberized ones. And I always believe these are better. Well, as for the gasket, I'm not, oh, I might as well rip it off, it's broken, so I gotta change it. Sometimes, if you put it, put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, it'll actually soften that gasket enough you can save it and reuse it. This one was broke already, so that ship is sealed. This carburetor, I twisted this jet off, and, uh, 
I just get another, I get, my dad's got W6 ones kicking around, so I'm going to get one for, from him. But you see this float, I don't know if you can see us in camera, but it's cracked here. I need a float too, so I'm going to have to make one good carburetor out of two, I don't have a lot of choice. When you get a crack, a crack in a float like this, it'll, it'll give you nothing but nightmares, so better fix it right. Okay. Ca the carburetor to the left, I did find another carburetor, but slightly different. This is a Super W6 carburetor, and this is a 400 carburetor. The regular W6, the choke's on this side, and the, on the outside, and the Super's on the inside, as with the 400. But the, the ball should be the same, but the big difference is, this screw here is down here on the Super 6 carburetor. Now I could use the Super 6 carburetor completely, or I could make a 400 carburetor because this bottom bowl should be identical. I think I'll probably make the 400 carburetor would probably be the best choice. Although it shouldn't run much different because the Super W6 does have the same engine exactly as the 400. So I'll do, give an ultrasonic cleanup to to these carburetors and get one go working. The other day I got uh, my carburetor done for the 400. Got her cleaned up good and put together, and I made a carburetor between the six and the 400. So we'll try that. I cleaned up the sediment bowl too. Today, I'm also gonna, this is a decent fuel tank, but the sediment bowl is broken off. So we'll take that, the old one out. And the, this fuel tank's pretty clean, I checked it out. Just got a little rust, I think I'll just sweat and just swish some vinegar in it, clean it out. And we'll use this one. I'll put the carburetor on and uh, and the gas line, and then it should be, then the gas line should be done at least. I was gonna change well, do a full service on the 560 today, but you can see the trees are moving pretty good. It's blowing pretty hard. Yeah, I don't like changing well when it's windy. There's no point in dumping the oil and putting the put, putting dirt back in it that's counterproductive to me so we'll wait until it's come and then we'll do a full service on the 560. I haven't been able to do anything with the gas tank so I'll put the carburetor on so I get something done and I'll have to get a bigger easy out. This manifold I think came off my Super W6 originally and I just, this pipe was, was the threads are bad and I threaded it for this but I had a manifold off another Super W6 so I put it on, on my 6 and then I just rethread this uh, manifold and put a different pipe on for the 400. But this this stud is bent and I'm going to change it in the inside. You have to work them while I get with your fingers. These are a royal pain in the ass to get at when you get a carburetor on. So it's good to lube them up and get them so you can work them with your fingers before you try. There. Doing that, the little things like that can save you a lot of frustration. Because these are miserable, these inner ones. And now that I got with my fingers, I'm not too concerned about getting it. Try this one. 
Find dead. If it comes off, if it doesn't to me have to stay bent, but I'm hoping that. Yeah, it's coming. Now with the gasket, I tack a little grease on the manifold so it stays put. Just stick a little bit, just so it stays put. Because it's a, roar, it's a pain to hold the carburetor to get, get this in place and, and hold the gasket too. These are pain to line up, but they do go. That's why I sprayed the lube on it. And it's against the lock washer and I did it by my, with my fingers. How many seconds did it take to do that? Too many people getting to it. No, I went a little bit too much. This one, this one here needs to have this looser so. Start. Oh darn phone. I'll have to shut this off. That was a fun one to tighten. And a hard time even getting the wrench on it to tighten it. I said these are a royal pain in the ass, I wasn't kidding. They are a bit of a nightmare for sure. I mean I get a crow foot wrench and make sure this is tight. If they, they, these are not tight enough and it leaks vacuum, you're gonna have a world of trouble with this. Hard time starting it for sure. And then you could suck in dust and dust the engine, but this side of the carburetor, good luck with it. Both these gas tanks are, are 400. This one is the standard one for a 400, and this is the increased capacity one. And these are uh, substantially deeper. I'm going to go, this is a cleaner tank, if I can go with just the standard one. 
not just because it's a cleaner tank, but the original one was a standard tank. And the gas line will work on it. The, the sediment bowl and gas lines on a different place on the increased capacity tanks. So I've got to go with a standard one. They both come off of 400s, both of them. And the 4, 400, 450 is the same tank. And I believe the farm halls also had the option of the deeper tank. So we'll, we'll use, but we'll use the shallow one because that's what I got lying for. terribly tight usually they're hand tight only. I could drill it bigger and try and collapse it. <laughs> I'm gonna go this way. And, and tap it out or try and break it off. I think it's thin enough. Let's see. This is thin enough. I should be able to take a chisel and cave it in and save my threads. I think. Yeah, try something, right? Sometimes the stuff gets so thin you can chisel you can chisel it out and I'm gonna try and do that. It is working. I'd be darn cautious doing this. I could break I could break my fuel tank so easy. Okay, I got the the wall broken off sediment bowl out, but the threads are dirty, I'm going to have to run a tap through them to clean them up. Yeah, I go get a pipe tap, I don't have one here. A 3 8 pipe tap. That it should work. Actually, I could run the tap in a little more and clean the threads out a bit more. 
That didn't go up that much. Pipe threads are tapered so you don't want to uh, You don't want to thread it too much, otherwise you screw up your next piece. Okay, there we are. Now you just got to put this in loose. This tank needs a little bit of cleaning. It's not bad, but it's not perfect. It needs to be better than it is. Yeah, there is a little rust in it. It's not terrible, so... I'll get some vinegar and shake it up a bit and... See what happens. This is a four liter jug of vinegar. This stuff's not that expensive. Probably should heat the stuff up first, but I'm not. Should tumble a gas tank around for a while, actually. <clears throat> oh, look at the gunk that brought up. I definitely cleaned the tank out some. Look at all the rust and crap. Okay, now is the time for the sediment bowl now that the tank's bolted on. I use some pipe dope on it to prevent leaks. Put it on the thread liberally so it seals good. Now I'll put the sediment bowl in under here. I don't know if you can see it because of the... Tighten it pretty much as tight as I can by hand. Okay, now it's starting to get tight. So I've got to deliberately stop short of my goal. Then I'll get the line and turn it into it. If I turn too much by a chance and have to back off, so, well, then it might leak. It'll certainly be loose. And we don't want that. Now we'll put the line in. I blew this out with the air, with the compressed air. So it should be, it should get gas through, no problem now. Start in the carburetor first. Then I'll turn the sediment bowl in place. You don't dare cross thread these lines because then you got problems. So you gotta do things methodically and carefully. Now I got get the, these take a three quarter inch wrench and I'll turn it a bit, turn it until it's square. Then it should start with my fingers, and it does. There you go. I gotta go get a wrench and tighten both ends now. This thing semi rounded off inside. This end is good though.
Well, now that the tank is some, we got somewhat of a clean tank, a clean gas line, clean sediment bowl, clean carburetor, good manifold. There isn't much excuse that it won't run on account of gas anyways. I think I'm going to call this a video. It's going to be very long if I do the rest of it. So you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching. God bless. Bye.